Aloha everyone. I know that I was supposed to be doing this Facebook Live in the practitioner only group. I was only supposed to be in the practitioner training and those of you who are watching it on video, I know you're having to watch it on my main page. You'll live, everything will be fine. Probably getting a notification that I'm going live right now anyway. Um, I'm talking to the NLP practitioners about the presuppositions of NLP. And today, the presupposition is the meaning of communication is the response you get. And that's really an important presupposition. So I thought I would share it with the entire group. And I thought I would also share it with my daughter who's sitting right over here. Hello. I want to say hi to Skyler. <laughs> we did not plan on matching. We both went downstairs and had gray on. And so we were like, hey, I'm like, Skyler, maybe you should do this Facebook Live with me. To which she said, no, but look, I changed my communication and look what I was able to do. I was able to get her on the Facebook Live. Yay. She did her practitioner training in San Diego last year um, and did such an amazing job with it. Uh, you did the swish pattern. What did you do the swish pattern on? Biting my nails. You did the swish pattern on biting your nails. That was a year ago. Is everyone on your nails? <laughs> Check you that can't out. Really see you can't really see. That was nice. They're all nice and painted and she did the swish pattern to get rid of it. And then there's a boy who liked you. <laughs> Look at the color shift. That's a good color shift. There's a boy who like, I'm, I'm talking about me, Skylar. I'm having a color shift. Yeah. There's a boy who liked you. What's, what's his name? Robbie. Robbie. Yeah. And then what did you do? You did, uh, you went back to school. I did the swish pattern with him and he stopped biting his nails, but then he started shaking his legs, but we worked on that too. So yeah and you know so she goes back she goes back to school and on one of the recesses she's like you like me and you you think that i'm gonna need to uh you know be your girlfriend or something but you got hideous nails so you're gonna be with me you gotta have good looking nails look at me i handled my stuff at an nlp training and so what did you do, do on a recess did you do a switch pattern with him mm -hmm. yeah. that's pretty funny my girl. So she'll be teaching NLP. She'll be at your very next practitioner training. Oh <laughs> She's like, oh gosh, trainer's training first. She's doing master practice this summer. But anyway, here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to have Skylar share uh, when you were in preschool. What happened? Um, I'll so, hold it for you. Oh, okay. So one of my parents, <laughs> my mother, she has, um, uh, she buys a lot of stuff, one thing. So both her and my grandma would buy, like, two pounds of hand sanitizers at hand, a time. Hand sanitizer, just to keep her hands clean. Yeah, so someone also had one, and at the time, I was like, oh, no, it's okay, I can still buy it. Oh, buy it, no, take it, without her noticing. And then, well, uh, other people did notice. Yeah. Yeah. See, when Skylar was a kid, she went through a phase, I'm just clipping my thing back on, so when Skylar was a kid, she went through a phase that a lot of kids go through, which is they take something that they see. They're like, I like this thing that I see, and they take it. They don't understand what theft is. They don't understand stealing. It, it was really quite innocent. There was no intention behind it. Ooh, but when she got caught, and she knew that something had gone wrong. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I noticed. <laughs> you noticed. <laughs> yeah. Ma mommy, mommy had some punishment. Mm. And we'll talk about that one later when we're off camera. So here's the deal. I needed to communicate with Skylar about the fact that what she did isn't an appropriate behavior. And the two presuppositions that I drew on the most, one I've already explained, is the presupposition that people are not their behaviors. So the first thing as a parent I had to do was make sure that I don't assign a label to her of her being a liar. It was a behavior that she ran. The second presupposition is the one that we're talking about today, which is the meaning of communication is the response you get. What that means from an NLP perspective, and those of you who have not done any NLP, this is why there's such an importance to doing it. You did your prac, and has your communication improved with your teachers? Yes. I mean, they were talking when you did your parent-teacher conference yesterday about how your communication is so clear, and you got the best grades in all of seventh grade. Yeah. Now I'm just bragging. I'm just bragging about my girl. But here's the deal. Skylar learned this presupposition that the meaning of communication is the response you get. So when she doesn't understand something from her teacher and she goes up and asks her teacher to clarify something, if the teacher doesn't clarify it for her, what she learned is that in the NLP training, 
that saying the same thing a second time and a third time and a fourth time in the exact same way, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result, that's the definition of insanity. And not the workout program, we're talking about like bat shit crazy. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you get crazy, you keep doing the same thing over and over again thinking you're gonna get a different result. No, 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 so here's the deal. The meaning of communication is the response you get from an NLP perspective means if you wanna find out from your teachers what it is that you need to do from an assignment perspective, you have to change your communication in order to get the response. This is really cool. This, is a, this was my biggest takeaway when I did my practitioner training at 13. You did it earlier than I did. Yeah. You were 11. The biggest thing that I took away from my practitioner training was to change your communication. Now, one of the things that I promised Skylar, one of the things that I said to Skylar is that I'll make sure that she gets off of here after a couple of minutes and that I'll talk to you guys so she can get ready. We're gonna go watch Captain Marvel right after this. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, you go get ready. Thanks, Morgan. Okay. I love Bye. you. Bye-bye. So I wanted to have her come on here because she also got the same takeaway that I did. This massive takeaway of the idea that your communication, the whole purpose for you communicating something to someone is to get a specific response. So I said to Skylar, I would love for you to come on this Facebook Live with me. My goal in my communication with her was to get her on the Facebook Live and to share a story, share her success with her nail biting, share her you know, success with using NLP. And she said, no. Well, so then I changed my communication with her to help her realize it's gonna be fun, we're gonna have, you know, it's gonna be looking at yourself on there, and you know, it's gonna to be to just the people that I know. And when I did all of that, she was like, oh, okay, that feels good. Ethan, my son Ethan, who's not watching right now, but I'm sure he might go back and watch this at some point. His bedroom, which was right over there before he went off to college. I remember one time I said to him, Ethan, go clean your room. And he didn't, he didn't clean his room. Did not clean his room. In fact, he just went on and started doing other stuff. And I said to him, Ethan, go clean your room. I said it a second time. And he still did not go clean his room. Well, if I said it a third time, then the issue is with me. The issue is not with him. The issue is with me not changing my communication. So the idea that the meaning of communication is the response you get is so powerful because what I did was I went in and I explained to Ethan the repercussions of him not cleaning his room. Now that got him. That got his attention. His room's right over there. The room got clean. Everything was handled after that. So here's what I want you guys to take away. Here's the thinking that I want you to have. NLP is about emulating what successful people do and not modeling what unsuccessful people do. You want to model what successful people do and successful people change their communication. They shift their communication style, how they say it, what they say, their delivery, in order to get the response they're looking for. Too many people think about the words. Too many people who are unsuccessful think about only the words and only you know, what the very specific things that you say and they focus in on that. I teach people how to become presenters all the time and I know as people are learning how to become a presenter, they're so hyper-focused on the specific words that they're putting out there that they don't realize it's not about what you say, it's about how you say it. Think about that, right? Tone, the tone that you put into something, the tone that you have absolutely changes how a person perceives what you're saying. So become very clear with what it is that you are saying, but become even clearer with how you're delivering it. And then rather than focusing on the words or all like the syntax or the grammar or anything, focus in on the result that you're getting. And this is NLP 101. And if you're not getting the result that you're wanting to get, what you do is you change your communication in order to get the result. So focus on the result, not the destination for getting there. Cool. All right, thank you guys for joining me in your busy day today. And if you're watching on the video, pass the video along to someone else. And uh, I'm so glad that Skylar got to jump on and be a part of it. That was fun. Okay, take care. See you guys later. Aloha.